Oh. And I believe we are now live on the book club. It's eight o'clock and it is the 5th of May. Um, welcome to this episode of Tracy Talks To, where once again I am joined by Anne, Linda and Joe. And we're going to be talking about new books, new hot books that are being published in um, April, May and June. So hopefully um, we'll be able to give you some great recommendations. And the good news is that um, April's books are obviously already out, so you can download them straight away. Um, we've all chosen our books in advance. Most of us have read most of the books. Some of us haven't read any of them. No, we have. We've all read at least five, four or five of our nine books. Um, they're all different genres. Um, so hopefully, well, um, most of them will be um, something you'll love. Um, so I'm actually going to go to Anne first because I'm trying to get my paperwork in order. So Anne, if you don't mind, would you tell us about your three books that you're selecting for April and when they are out or if obviously they're out now. So take okay. away, tell us about April's books. I will do. OK, the first one is actually only out digitally in April. It comes out in paperback in June, but I wanted to get it in now. This is everything happens oh. everything happens for a reason by katie allen published by arenda books it's a debut novel i read this book when it was submitted to arenda on a word document and i was absolutely blown away by it and i really really hoped that karen was able to publish it and luckily she did get katie it's I don't, I don't really know what sort of genre you'd call it really, contemporary fiction with a little bit of a um, mystery. It's quite poignant. It's about a lady who has a miscarriage and she wants to know why. Somebody wants, somebody said to her once, everything happens for a reason. And she kind of started thinking, well, why has this happened? And she remembers that when she was pregnant, she stopped a man jumping from a bridge and she kind of comes to the conclusion that her baby died because she saved that life. And she decides she wants to track him down and find out what's happened. There are really funny bits in it and there are really heartbreaking bits in it. And Katie's own story, when you know that, makes you realise how, how well written and how, how she can say what she does say. And what I really like about it, and I know some people don't like this, is it, a lot of it's written in email. So it's quite easy to zip through and go back and forth. And we really, really hope that this takes off because it, it deserves to. It's beautiful. And I help pick the cover too. So that's my number one book, April Digital and June Paperback. My second book is, oh, this is a beautiful book. The Ends of the Earth by Abby Greaves. I think it was first week in April this was published. This is Abby Greaves second book, her first one, The Silent Treatment, I read last year or the year before. And I don't know why, but for some reason, when I picked The Silent Treatment up, I thought it was going to be a thriller. I don't know why, I hadn't read the blur properly and it wasn't. It's, it, and The Ends of the Earth is a similar sort of genre. It's, it's about people, there seems to be a theme recently it's a bit kind of like a female Mike Gale sort of thing. So what it is, I've forgotten the main character's name. <laughs> the main character stands on the platform at a train station in London and she stood there every single day for seven years holding up a sign saying, come home Jim. She works in a supermarket, then she goes and stands on the platform and then she goes home. And one day she loses her temper and shouts and it's captured on a, on a mobile phone and it goes viral and everybody suddenly wants to know who Jim is and where Jim has gone. And she meets a, um, a reporter, newspaper reporter, and between them, the newspaper reporter doesn't tell her that she's a newspaper reporter. They become friends, but she wants to find out who Jim is. And the story goes back and forth. We learn how they met and this great love story and how they really loved each other and then why suddenly Jim was no longer there. It's just beautiful. I really, really love this book. So that's number two book. 
And my third one is a completely different genre. Mm. This is Erin Kelly's Watch Her Fall. I think Erin Kelly is one of the cleverest crime authors that we've got in this country. All her books are really intelligently written with so much depth. And this one sends you on such a roller coaster ride. It starts out as something and then it goes into something completely different. It's set in the ballet. And I have to admit, I knew nothing about the ballet. I didn't even know the story of Sleeping Beauty. I didn't know what it was. I know everything now because I went on a Google rabbit hole afterwards and I've been watching <laughs> them um, dancing and learned so much about the ballet. It's about a lead ballerina whose father owns the school that they're at and something happens to her and she's injured. Something happens to one of the minor ballerinas and she's injured and it's how their stories collide. It's not just the ballet, it's, it touches on immigration and poverty and coercion, bullying, but it's got a great mystery at, at the middle of it. It's wonderful. I, I picked it up at Christmas it wasn't out until April and I thought I'll just have a look through this and then four hours later I thought oh I finished it <laughs> and then I put it aside and then I signed up for the blog tour in April and I thought I haven't done anything with that book I had to read it again which I didn't mind doing but yeah that is perfect that's my three thank Lovely. you well before we go on I did say that we we've got we are live on the book club and that we, we haven't got questions but I just wanted to read out that everyone's saying hello um and Louise Beach also loved Everything Happens for a Reason. Um, and so did Anne Williams. She loved it. Um, and so did Karen. <laughs> and yes, uh, book one, the name of your... Sorry, what was the first name of the book you just said, uh, um, Anne? Because Claire missed the name of your first book. Everything Happens for a Reason. Everything Happens for a Reason. Okay, but all of the, the books that we're going to be talking about will be up on my blog later, so you can be able to see it. All right, so I'm going to talk about my three books now. Um, I've only read... There you go, thank you. I've only read one of these three so far, and that's just because it's just been a bit manic here. Um, so apologies. But So I'll talk about the book I've read first, which is The Whole... Tr the whole there you go. The Whole Truth by Cara Hunter, which is the latest book um, in her um, D.I. Adam Forley series. Um, and each book really does get better and better. And it's out on, well, it's out. It came out on the 29th of April. And it's currently only 99p on Kindle, guys. So grab it. But you should read the first four, three, three or four books in, uh, in the series first. Um, this has got a fabulous. Um, main character, the uh, D.I. Adam Forley, who looks after his team um, based in Oxford. Um, and what I loved about this particular book is that she has given you a little um, summary at the beginning, like a family tree of who's who. So for us with a, the memories of a goldfish, it was really great to try and remember <laughs> who the main characters are in his team. Um, so she, it's, they're always police procedures, obviously, um, and they're always quite unique um, and clever ideas and that she uses social media a lot in her writing so she will also um, do it as twitter twitter posts and she gets the um, blog people to start convert so you get to see both sides of the crime you get to see the police investigation and you get to see the public's perception which is always quite interesting um, this one is about sexual assault on a uh, student at oxford by a university professor um, and the police investigating are obviously are called to the, the school to investigate this assault and they get there expecting what you would expect and realize that the, the predator is actually a female professor and the victim is a six foot male rugby player. So it's quite a twist on that. Um, and again, it's absolutely brilliant. And I can't recommend Cara Hunter's books enough because I think they are absolutely brilliant. Um, my second book, is someone I don't know if you've heard of. Um, this is <laughs> Louise Beach. This is how we are human. Now, I have to admit, I did pre-order it and then I returned it because, to be honest, I get them free. No, I'm joking. I didn't really. Um, I, I got it um, on my Kindle and I kept meaning to read it for this, but then I, 
I found podcast. So I'm really sorry, Louise. So what I'm going to do is just let you all know that it is out. Obviously, it came out on the 10th of April. Everyone I know that has read it has said it's amazing. And I'm actually even on the blog tour in June. So I will read it very soon. Um, but for anyone that doesn't know about Louise's new book, um, I'll just give you a little brief. Um, Sebastian James Murphy is 20 years old, six months and two days old. Sorry, he's 20 years, six months and two days old. He loves swimming, fried eggs and Billy Ocean. Sebastian is autistic and he's lonely. Veronica wants her, Sebast wants her son Sebastian to be happy. She wants the world to accept him for who he is. Um, so she's thinking about paying a professional to give him what he desperately wants. Violetta is a high-class escort who steps out into the night thinking only of money, of her nursing degree, paying... Is it just me or has Tracy disappeared? She's frozen, I think. Just message her. Shall I carry on? Is it, do you think? <laughs> I, you think I think we're better, yeah. <laughs> oh. oh, she's gone all together yeah, now. She's gone. She's gone. I tell you what, I'll carry on until she comes back. How about that? Okay, yeah. Okay. Good thing, Linda. So, my first book is The Whispers, Heidi Perks. I can't find my camera, but there you go. Um, which was out on the 15th of April from Century, Penguin Random House. Um, billed as a, a sort of psychological thriller, but a bit of a Marmite book for some because not as, as twisty perhaps as, as people might have expected. But I absolutely loved it. It's um, about Anna who goes missing. She is a wife. She has a very tight friendship group, a son that she adores, and she disappears. And um, Grace, her oldest friend, has reappeared in her life and wants to know what's happened to Anna. And um, it's really about female relationships, school ground politics, what happens at the school gate, that cliquey, nasty, secretive, whispery kind of um, behaviour that you can sometimes get. Um, and I found it really, really clever. I thoroughly enjoyed it. So that's my, my first one. And as I say, that was out on the 15th of April. My second choice is Carol Drinkwater's An Act of Love. And I think you've read this as, I've read as that, well, yeah. haven't you? It's beautiful. It is. It's I think it is Carol's best book. Yeah, I, yeah. It's absolutely beautiful. It's set in France, um, 1943, and it's a Jewish girl, Sarah and her family, who are desperately trying to evade the Nazis, of course. Um, they're closing in on her. It's, it's a, yes, it's a war book, but it's a romance. It's... It's a love story to nature, to relationships, to loyalty, betrayal. Um, and I read it because Carol asked me to, and she'd been a, a speaker at our local literary festival. And I thought, yes, that's fine. I'm, I'm happy to do that. But I absolutely loved it. It is so atmospheric, so beautifully written. Um, so it's, it's women's fiction, but it's historical fiction. There's a thriller element to it. There's a mystery element to it. Um, and one that I really think... Oh. 
Oh, she's back. That lots of people oh, would did enjoy. You miss, did you miss me? No, we carried on without you. I, I, I don't even know if we're still live on, on the book club. Yeah. Okay. We, um, I'll Carry finish on, my please. last one and then you can you can pick up. You, no, go around because then Joe and then I'll go back because I'm trying okay. to work out what I've done here. <laughs> and my third book for April is Anne Griffin. This is a this is the proof. But it has a beautiful uh, blue cover. Anne Griffin's um, Listening Still. And her first, her debut, when all is said, was one of my books of the year. And this will be one of my books of the year for this year. It's about Jeannie, who talks to the dead. In the, in the short period after they have died, they still have the ability to speak and she can hear them and converse with them. So there's a kind of supernatural element to it, but there's humour. Um, but there's so much more than that. She, she has given up her life um, to be part of her parental funeral directors. Um, she's married to Niall. They have their own issues in their own relationship. And it's just so emotive and so cleverly written. It's quite funny in places. Some of the things the dead need to say uh, and what the messages they want passing on to loved ones are quite entertaining. But Anne Griffin, she, she just writes so evocatively and so beautifully. Um, so again, it's a difficult, it's, it's, yes, it's women's fiction, it's literary fiction, um, and at the end of the novel, it's a really, really emotional finish. And that's all I'm going to say. So Anne Griffiths, listening still, out from Scepter on the 29th of April. Brilliant. Thank you. Now, all I can hear is, I don't even know what I've done now. Have I gone again? No. no. I don't know. Honestly, I don't know what I'm doing here. Hold on. <laughs> Joe, do you want to carry on? Because I'm really struggling to get my... Oh, here I am. There you go. <laughs> I'm here. You're there. I'll see you. I'm so exhausted now. You think you're having a bad day. Can I just very quickly just go back to... I mean, okay. I'm sure everyone's even... just Probably, probably people have read it in between the times me disappearing. <laughs> oh, look, that's not even Louise. Although, to be honest, that is what Louise looks like when she hasn't shaved. But going back to... I've lost Louise. Well, there's a shame. Hold on. Oh, my... You know when you're just oh, having shoot. one of those days. Um, oh, can you hear me talking to myself as well in the background? This is just getting better and better by the moment here. Okay, I'm just going to have to mute myself for in a minute. Right, going back to Louise, which we said. So it, anyway, it's it, I kind of lost my thread then. Basically, if you've ever read any of Louise's books then she is um wonderful with characters she really gets under your un under your skin um the fact that she's chosen to write i mean they always say you should write what you know and the fact that louise was a high class escort i think is really <laughs> brave of her to talk about it and and i just personally can't wait to read the book myself so that is this is how we are human which is out already um and so you can download it now right so, um, next book I was wanted to talk about is a new book um, out was out on the first of April. It's also ninety nine p on um, on Amazon Kindle, and it is Bullet Train. So let me just find the uh, there we go Bullet Train. It's by someone called Kataro Isaka, but I probably haven't pronounced that correctly. Um, it is basically sounds amazing, and the fact that it's also been made it's being made into a film right now with Brad Pitt and Sandra Bullock is enough for me to say I need to read it. <laughs> it's a dark satirical thriller, and this is by a best selling Japanese author, which is following the perilous train ride of five highly motivated assassins. Um, so I'm not going to go into it, but it sounds fascinating. It's going to be um, out with Brad Pitt. Enough said. And um, so five assassins discover they're all on the same train and they realise their missions are not as, as unrelated as they first appear. It was a bestseller in 
Japan. It's obviously now been translated. And so it's a thriller that fizzes with an incredible energy and surprising humor. So it says on Amazon. So go buy it. It's 99p. And those are my three. So, Joe, over to you. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Um, book one is uh, it's mm. The Therapist by oh, B.A. Paris. Um, I love B.A. Paris, one of my favourite authors, ever since she wrote Behind Closed Doors, which everybody loves. Um, loved all her books. Last book didn't quite hit the mark for me. It was very different from her other books. A great book, but it was more women's fiction. We're talking about and, The Dilemma. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was, it was, it was, yeah, I, I, it was, it was good. It just wasn't what I was expecting. But this one is brilliant. So good. It's about a couple called Alice and Leo, and they move into a gated community. Um, didn't move into one myself. Um, and she sort of finds out that there's a very devastating grisly secret about the house that she has bought with Leo. Um, and she becomes obsessed with trying to work out, as everybody does. I mean, I just pack my bags and leave. But no, she decides she's going to stay there and work out what the secret is. And in doing so, puts herself in a little bit of danger. I did not know where this one was going. I love that. I love a twist that I don't know. Um, so that's my first one. That's already out. It's supposed to be out in January, but it was delayed. So out in April. Um, second one. Oh, my God. I waited for ages for this one as well. I had that on pre-order for about a year and something and it was just like oh, please please just just give it to me, give it to me. <laughs> uh, this one I have one problem with this book and it is the blurb on the actual book I think it it tells the reader too much mm -hmm. there is a slight twist in there that is not a twist if you've actually read the read the blurb on the inside the blurb on goodreads is so much better because it doesn't give as much away so i'm not going to tell you what it's about um because i don't want to spoil it and it's just so good fiona cummins is an amazing author her books are so beautifully written and they're so dark and but they're, there's a, like a human side to it as well it's always the it's they're almost heartbreaking and it's it's horrible. It, this, there's a lot of scenes in this that might be a bit much for some people. There are scenes of abuse. Um, and obviously, when I was 10, um, it's about a child killer. Not somebody who kills children, but a killer who is a child. And that can be very difficult to read about, but she does it brilliantly. And you're... Yeah, your sympathies probably lie in places you didn't expect them to lie. And then my third, now I love this. I've got Anne to thank for this book. I love this book, Anne. Yes, I know you did. Oh, it's one of my books of the year. I absolutely adored it by um, Anna Wharton. Um, and I'd never heard of it until the lovely Anne contacted me about a blog tour. And I read the blurb and I thought, oh, that sounds quite good. Uh, I thought it was going to be more of a psychological thriller or a bit of a whodunit type thing. And it was just so much more um, about a girl called Chloe who lives with her nan, who's got Alzheimer's, and she cares for her nan in the evenings. And during the day, she works as an archivist at a local newspaper office. And one day she finds a story about a four-year-old girl who has got, had gone missing uh, about 20 odd years ago from a park and she becomes kind of obsessed with this crime story and she wants to solve it because the little girl has never been found and um, yeah, that's all I'll say about that one. It does not go in the direction you're expecting it to go though <laughs> um, and I know a lot of people weren't so keen on this one but this that's one of my books of the year. I absolutely adored it so definitely recommend that one. And that's my three April books. Lovely. Thank you. And let's move on to May. Okay. So obviously we're now in May, so let's start buying some new books. Okay, May. My first one I've given away, so I don't have it here anymore. I gave it to my post lady. Everybody says, oh, I bet your post lady hates you. She doesn't. She loves me. <laughs> she gets my books. So it's Lost Property by Helen Paris. 
and I'm just looking on my blog what I said about it. It's published, it was published digitally in April, hardback 13th of May by Transworld Doubleday. It's about Dot Watson. Dot Watson works in the Lost Property Office and she's been there, a fixture there for years and years and years. But Dot's lost her way. So 12 years ago, her life went off on a strange little course and she's never kind of forgiven herself. And she just puts everything into all the lost property and she 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 labels everything up with little mustard colored tags and she knows where everything is and one day a gentleman comes in called mr appleby and he's looking for his shopping bag and he's not really bothered about his shopping bag but he's bothered about the little purse that was inside the shopping bag because that belonged to his late wife and he used to take the shopping bag and the little purse to her grave with the crossword and do the crossword next to the grave so dot becomes obsessed with tracking down the little purse but she actually has to face up to quite a lot of her own demons it's it could be really twee i think i said that in my review it sounds a bit twee but actually it deals with some pretty serious issues when you find out dot's past and the things that she goes through now she goes through a really horrible stage at, at one stage through the book it's quite uncomfortable to read but it's um it's a date I think it's a debut and it's just it's just lovely I just fell in love with Dot I, I, these sort of books seem to be the vogue it is a bit similar to Abby Greaves before this kind of getting hold of ordinary people of a certain age who've got lives and background and baggage and sorting them out it's it's really beautiful and I'd really recommend it and that one was put back a few times as well so but it's finally out 13th of May my next one is the final final round by Bernard O'Keefe so I've been reading Bernard O'Keefe for a lot of years he he's written he read oh, re, no, I can't get words out he wrote a romance called No Regrets that I read in about, must be about six years ago. And then he read, wrote a young adult novel, which I did the blog tour for, but he's he's gone into crime and it's published by Muswell Press, who are a real, a lovely little independent publishers who, who publish some lovely stuff. And this is the first in the DI Gary Baldy, Gary Baldy as in the biscuit <laughs> novels. <laughs> and it's set in Oxford, I haven't read it yet, but I'm going to. And it is, D.I. Garibaldi is a country music loving, self-educated and the only cop in the Met who can't drive a car. And it's the morning after the boat race and a man's body is found. So, so that's the basis of the case. I really, really like his writing, his previous writing. And I think that it's gonna to transfer to crime really well. So I'm looking forward to this and I hope he makes it big. And my final May is Don't Let Him In by Howard Linsky. I really, really like this guy's writing. He writes a lot of different, he, like, he writes crime, but he writes historical crime and then more contemporary crime. This is a contemporary one. And he does small towns really, really well. One of my favorite books of 2020 was Alice Teal is Missing, which he wrote and it was set in a Northern town where nothing ever happened. And I think I remember writing on my blog, it sounded just like where I came from. Tiny and little, nothing ever happens, but everything that happens, everybody knows about. And that's what Howard does really, really well. So this is the saying, it's the kind of place where everyone knows your name and your secrets. Rebecca hasn't been back in years, but she grew up in the shadow of a sinister local legend. There's always been deaths, more that can easily be explained. People dying in their houses behind locked doors. So that's my third book. Lovely. Right, I've actually got I've actually got a real book here. Wow. <laughs> hey, because I obviously only read on on Kindle, so I get sent the books and then I buy them on Kindle. Um, so my first book for May is The Perfect Lie by Joe Spain. It's out on the 13th of May, and in fact, we're actually giving three copies away at the moment on the book club. It's really clever. If you haven't read any of Jo's standalone psychological thrillers before, then you really should. She has got a wonderful imagination. Um, this one's slightly different. Um, we've got 
um, two two main. Well, we've got one main character in this one. Um, five years ago, um, a young lady called Erin moved to New York from um, from Ireland following a family tragedy. She meets and marries um, Danny, who is a detective. Very quickly after um, after arriving in New York, um, and they're living an idyllic life. And she's happy. She works as a um, she works in the publishing industry. She works from home some days. She's very very happy. And one morning, there's a knock at the door. The police are there, and Danny takes one look and jumps out the balcony to his death. I'm not giving anything away because that's the opening chapter, so I haven't given anything. There's no spoilers there. That's no shock, and that's also in the blurb. Um, so that's obviously pretty what shocking in itself um so then the the story is then go it then there's obviously some other stories that are bringing in there's lots of other characters and, and then um erin needs to find out what her husband was hiding why he jumped to his death um and then all of a sudden several months later she finds herself or 18 months later she finds herself in court charged with her husband's murder so Ooh. we have lots of befores and afters and I have to tell you, I did not know where we were going with this one. I mean, I am the worst, worst amateur detective and I give up. I do not know, did not see it. And I kept trying to work out what, how, what. And when the twist comes, you're like, aha, aha. So, yeah, really good, really enjoyable. And it's out on the 13th of May. So that is The Perfect Lie by Joe Spain. My next book is... Uh, 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 is now, this is Ride or Die um, by Kuram Rahman. Now, this is the third book in his series. Now, I decided a couple of months ago to start reading more books by um, brown authors. And I had seen Kuram being sp speaking at the Harrogate panel when we were allowed out um, <laughs> to Harrogate. And he was on the, I think it was on the debut panel um, new blood and he was great and for once I, I actually bought the book then and there um while I was at Harrogate and then it was only when we started talking to other authors I realized I didn't ha actually read enough books written by non-white authors so it luckily it was on my his first book was on my kindle started reading it and it was brilliant so I downloaded the second one and then I just downloaded the third one. So these are the third, this is the third book. So I'm, you do need to read them in order um, because it's a fabulous tale. Um, it's about a young guy called Jay. He is from Hounslow. He is a part-time drug dealer. He is, um, they say he's the, he's a part-time drug dealer and an accidental jihadist. And he, it's so funny he ends up working for the MI5 as a spy. He is just the funniest character and the situation is just brilliant. So book one and book two. And this is, from what I gather, unfortunately, the final book, which I think, boo, we want more Jay because you can give us more Jay. But Jay finds himself with his arch enemy, um, a, a, an assassin, and they are having to team up to... I can't give too much away, but it's fast. It's very, very funny. The humour stays without. So if you enjoyed book one, you will love book two and book three. So brilliant series, 100% recommend it. Um, so yeah, read those. And then my final book for this month. Oh dear. The Missing Sister. I, I brought it to show you. Oh, don't tease me, Anne. That's not fair. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Wow. <laughs> so that's a little read I'm going to be doing shortly. Wow. Well, I actually do listen to these books. So just in case you nobody knew, this is Lucinda Riley's wonderful series um, of the Seven Sisters. Um, and this is now book seven. Um, so again, you need to read them in order, uh, although each of them are standalone. We have um, Parsalt, who um, has brought, has adopted six girls from all over the world and on his death when he dies he leaves them all a little clue to the where, where they came from and so each of them then go to all the different ends of the world to find out where they came from and it's historical fiction it's family saga they're bloody long books as Anne's just shown you <laughs> so prepare to put yourself away for at least a week and a half I've listened to them all 
um, because I love the accents and I can't pronounce half the words they're saying. So to me, it's just an incredible escape. And this one, I'm not sure the, the dates of these, but this one we've been waiting for because I only came to this series recently. I know people have been reading this series for years. I only came to it last year. So I've listened to the first six last year. Um, so people have been waiting for this one for years and years and years. And finally, it's been delivered. And then apparently Lucinda has said, whoops, haven't quite finished. There's going to be another book after this. Um, so that's coming out on the 27th of May. And I know what I'm doing with my audio credit on the 27th of May. So please don't contact me. I will be gone for the next five days after that. <laughs> So those are my three. We've got The Perfect Lie, which is a dark psychological thriller. We've got The Missing Sister, which will be historical fiction. And then we've got Ride or Die, which is topical humour and 100% recommended. Those are my May. Over to you, Linda, before I, before I freeze out. OK. Um, my first May book is Sheila O'Fallagan's Three Weddings and a Proposal. And I have to say... I don't think the title does it any favours no. because I think it makes it sound rather trivial and, you know, four weddings and a funeral and you either love or loathe that film, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I've been a fan of Sheila O'Fallaghan for years and years and years. And I think this is her writing at her best. Um, it's about Delphi, who is part of an Irish family, unsurprisingly, um, quite feisty, a businesswoman. Uh, happily single and her family are always wanting to know when is she going to settle down and have a family um, and it makes it sound uh, rather light and it is a light read and it's an enjoyable read in, in that respect but there's so much more depth to this than I think might be given credit to it because of its, of its title um, it's very feminist in lots of ways there's a real sense of Irishness. And I think the Irish have a real voice for storytelling. I, I don't, whether it's that kind of oppression of the Irish and the way they, they had to kind of communicate through, through narrative and oracy, I don't know. But, but this is Sheila O'Fallaghan writing really, really good Irish fiction at its best. Um, if I just read you a little bit of the blurb to give you an idea of what it what it means. Delphi has been living her best life, loving her job, her friends, her no strings relationships and her dream house by the sea. Now she has to question everything she believed about who she is and what she wants. And it does sound very chicklity in lots of ways, but it isn't. There's real depth to this, real maturity to it. And and I loved it. Really recommend that one. My next one I haven't yet read and it's Unbreak Your Heart. This is a, a proof Oops. by Katie Marsh. And I haven't read it yet because I'm working up to it because <laughs> every time I read a Katie Marsh book, I am in pieces for about three weeks afterwards. I've loved everything she's ever written. Um, she manages to convey such emotion in her writing that you, you kind of have to be emotionally prepared to <laughs> to invest in it and, and you need quite honestly you need solitude because it's not the sort of writing that you can read in public and this one is about little boy Jake who is dying um, and his last wish as it were is to find his dad someone to love um, and if I just leave you with with that thought um, his his father is a, a single parent um, who has grief of his own already. And I, I know that I am going to be an emotional wreck. So I am going to read this one, Unbreak Your Heart by Katie Marsh, out on the 27th of May from Hodder. And I forgot to say, Sheila O'Flanagan is out on the 20th of May from Hodder. Right. Um, so that's my second one, but as I say, I haven't, haven't read it yet. And then my third choice is very different, I think. It's called Out of the Shadows um, by Emily Midorikawa. You said that well, uh, well done. <laughs> well, I have to admit, I emailed her and she sent me a little audio clip of how to say it. <laughs> so she's going to be on the blog talking about it on, on Monday. It's out on the 11th on Tuesday and it's non-fiction and it's about um, 
real people, she's researched real people, Victorian women who um, some might be considered to be charlatans, some might be considered to be skilled, but they created this kind of Victorian superstar status out of running seances and being clairvoyant. And it's taken her a very long time to research. Um, some of the women were the Fox sisters. And if I, if I just read you the bit from the blurb about it, as I say, I haven't read it yet. The Fox sisters inspired some of the era's best known political activists and set off a transatlantic seance craze. While in the throes of a trance, Emma Hardinger Britton, another of the women in here, claimed guidance from the spirit world as she took on the millionaires of Wall Street before becoming America's first female presidential candidate. And Georgina Weldon narrowly escaped the asylum before becoming a celebrity campaigner against archaic lunacy laws. So it's, I think it's going to be a really uh, different kind of breed, a really interesting one. And I just thought it would be quite um unusual to have a non-fiction book in our mm. selections so i'm really really looking forward to that i think it'll be a uh, an insightful and entertaining read thank you joe what Hello. you got for us um oh first one it's out on the 13th of may which is when my poor amazon delivery man is going to have a heart attack <laughs> bringing all my new hardbacks to the door because I have so many pre-orders that are out on the 13th of May. Um, the first one I'm going to talk about is this one, oh. The Wolf Den by Elodie Harper. Uh, now, I like historical fiction. I'm quite picky about it. But this one goes back a little bit further than I've been before. So it starts off in, I think it's 74 AD, mm -hmm. and it's set in Pompeii one of my favourite places in the entire world. I absolutely love it. Um, I would just, oh, I could spend days there. I've, I've been, I went for the day and I could just spend, honestly, forever there. I was supposed to go back again, but obviously COVID. Uh, it's um, Elodie Harper. I've, I've read books of hers before, um, but it was, it was crime books that she wrote before. Um, I was introduced to her writing by another blogger, Jacob Collins, uh, recommended it to me. And she wrote some very dark crime books, which I absolutely loved. So this is a bit of a departure for her. It's um, set in a brothel in Pompeii. And I mean, it's, it's women's fiction at its absolute best. It explores women's friendships, um, Although it's about the sex trade, it's not a graphic book. There is a lot of sexual language in it, but it's not a titillating book at all. Um, Amara, who is the main character, she was um, sold as a slave and then eventually ended up in this brothel. Um, but she uh, was brought up by her father, who was a doctor, so she's very intelligent. Um, she's very resourceful. She's very clever. Um, but she um, is stuck in this brothel, having to service the men of Pompeii from the lowest to the highest. And what she really wants is her freedom. But um, this, the story is about how she goes about trying to find her freedom. But it's also about the other women that live in the brothel with her. It's their stories. Um, the descriptions of Pompeii are amazing. It's just so vivid. It's like it's like you want to open up the book and you expect like a big pop out to pop <laughs> out of it. You know, you sort of get the city sort of pops out. You can watch people walk around in it. it. It felt like that. It was just so yes, vibrant the way she writes and just explains everything. Uh, and it's the first one of a trilogy, so I'm assuming that it will lead up to. Uh, the eruption of Vesuvius in 79 AD, which we all know if we have an Alexa. Um, and so I don't know if it's going to be the same characters or if it's other characters, but uh, it's not even out yet, and I'm desperate for book two. So that's out on the 13th of May. Uh, the other two books, I haven't got copies of them uh, because I've read them 
uh, on my kit well on my phone i don't have a kindle so i read on this tiny little phone so my optician we're gonna start a GoFundMe page for you <laughs> right after this there'll be a link to my blog <laughs> i'm fine i'm fine honestly let me just put my glasses on <laughs> old eyes card oh, um the house guest you probably can't see that by charlotte northedge um very twisty very gripping um again one of those books that i thought was going to be something else and it wasn't uh the blurb says when kate moves to london after the disappearance of her sister she is in need of a friend and a chance meeting leads kate to della a life coach who runs support groups for young women and della takes a very special interest in kate and Kate soon finds herself entangled in Della's life. She ends up moving into Della's house and she becomes a nanny to her children. But uh, the children seem to have had a slight succession of nannies. Mm -hmm. And um, the reason being, well, you'll just have to read the book to find out. But that is out on the 13th of May and my hardback copy arrives on the 13th of May. It's so good. It's just absolutely brilliant. Um, and my other may book that i have read already and it's for a blog tour is um showing me again another little picture on my phone well you can't see that at all can you the nurse or something the nurse by j.a corrigan julianne corrigan um i think she writes other genres as well but i've never never read does she write women's fiction as well um i've only so. ever read her psychological thrillers um, she wrote one called Endless Suns, which was oh so dark and disturbing. It was just like, oh, I hang need on, to let me things. just write that down. Endless Suns, dark Endless and Suns. disturbing, fabulous, very thing dark and disturbing. There was yep. I listened to it on audio that one, and there was a scene where it was just like I wanted to rip my ears off because <laughs> that it was, sounds perfect. Thank you. It was, oh yeah, honestly, this is this is just great. It's about um, a nurse called Rose and she's been convicted of a murder and she's in prison and um an ex a journalist an author decides uh, quite likes the look of rose because she's quite attractive and he thinks that she's innocent and he wants to go to prison and he talks to her in prison to try and get her story because he thinks the public need to know that there's more to this story than meets the eye uh, so they, um, my favourite part was with her talking to Theo, the uh, author, they had quite a connection and she starts to reveal some secrets about her past, which again were quite shocking, um, quite disturbing. There's some twists in there that I didn't see coming. And in fact, I, I read it on one afternoon and I did something after I finished it. I, I don't normally do because I'm not this sort of person. I actually messaged the author <laughs> on Facebook Messenger <laughs> and just said, I've just got to tell you, I've just finished your book. And I just have to tell you how much it affected me mm -hmm. that the character of Rose just really resonated with me. And it was just, it was, I just felt something that I don't, often feel when i read a book so and she was very lovely and she did say oh, thank you very much for letting me know but i don't normally stalk authors like that oh you should it's great fun <laughs> no i need lessons tracy you need to teach me <laughs> so and that one's um out on the 20th of may i think it's to pre-order now on kindle for about 199 but definitely you know if you like sort of dark and twisty with lots of secrets have a go at that one lovely and just so you know Kerry Louise Jones thinks she looked gorgeous and says, give her a message because she has a spare Kindle paperwhite she'll give you. Oh, oh, thank you, Kerry. Thank you, Kerry. Did I mention I needed a Ferrari? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, are we done on May then? It's May. May's come to an end. We ready for June? Go for it, Anne. Okay. June. June is book three of Arenda Books, Jubilant June. So book one is Everything Happens for a Reason, book two is Louise Beach, and book three is One, one Last Time mm. by Helga Flatland. Helga Flatland's first book blew me away. 
it, she's she's Norwegian. She's translated into English by Rosie Hedger, and it's dark contemporary women's fiction. I would say men can read it as well. Um, what what Helga Flatland does is she gets into the dysfunctional family, and she unpicks them bit by bit, and she does it really really well. Her first book was about a couple who were getting divorced later in life and it was how their adult children dealt with it and honestly you wouldn't believe those children were, that were adults the way they blamed each other and blamed dad and blamed mum it was so so good this one is about um the main character is called Anne and she's dying of cancer and it's how she and her two daughters deal with that they go away on a holiday to France and all sorts of things come out, family secrets, long held repressions. The, it's just how do we deal with Anne's impending death and also deal with everything that happens in this family. She's she's magnificent. She really, really is. So yeah, that's June the June, June the something. I can't read it because I haven't got my reading glasses, but it's in June anyway. That's well recommended. Book two. I'm so excited about this. I know exactly which one. Yeah, oh, we all I don't are. Have to say anything, <laughs> do I? That's all I have to do. Washington, Washington, and Washington Poe is back. Really? It's like oh, it's just the greatest, isn't it? The greatest violent, gruesome cases with the most amazing crime fighting duo ever mm -hmm. ever invented this guy he just deserves every single accolade he gets he's he's amazing and such a nice man and he's a real he's he likes iron maiden and beer and punk and he's just amazing and everybody will know so this is is this book four yeah you, the bloke and i fight over this no the bloke has read it hasn't he no Oh, he hasn't read the other one yet. He's read one. them all. He's read them, but he hasn't read this yet. Right. No, he 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 reads Matt Veselowski before I do, but I have to read this first, and then and then while he's reading it, I'll say, "Did you get to that bit yet? What did you think about that? What what?" And also, if any of you've got, um, there's a collection of short stories that Goldsborough Book issued for their twenty first anniversary. It's a beautiful hardback edition. There's a short story written by Mike Craven in there. That's so Washington Poe. And it's really, really good too. So yeah, I can't, there's nothing really to say, is there, about these guys? It's just amazing. So that's that one. Oh, and my last book. This is True Crime Story, written by my boyfriend. No, sorry, oh. Anne. He was mine first. I thought. Right. <laughs> no, was mine first. No. I mean, he is a good writer. Can we just get in that he is actually a good writer as well? Oh, excellent. Delicious. Excellent. Joseph Knox. He. He, he he did write um, a Manchester series, but this is a standalone. And what I really like about this is it's written in, I don't know, it, it's, can you see? It's um, statements, police statements. So like little clunks about each person. And it says, in the early hours of Saturday, 17th of December, Zoe Nolan, a 19 year old Manchester University student walked out of the party taking place in the shared accommodation where she had been living for three months. She was never seen again. And I, I just think this guy can do no wrong. And he's mm -hmm. great as well. Ex-Waterstones bookseller, really nice guy. Beautiful girlfriend, unfortunately, but there you go. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm really, really looking forward to this one as well. Yeah, I've been saved. Those, but I think I think June's my most excited for. Mm. June's a mega month. Yes. So right thank you right i shall go on to my three in june so my first book i have read i have read this one is that night by mm. julian McAllister. it is out on the 10th of june which i think is a big date for yes, most, yes. Isn't it? right so this is if you haven't read julian's books before shame on you um but you they are all standalone they all have a legal edge to them they are all incredibly original and um clever and complex and well plotted and her latest book her previous book um which i now can't i've now just had a complete blank 
something about disappearing. Yeah, it's just what should no, no. Anyway, someone will help me out. Now. That actually went into my top ten books of last year, so I was very, very excited to, to read. Say That's that it. again. How to disappear. How to disappear, which yeah. is phenomenal. So I was really, really excited when obviously her new book was coming out. So I have read it. Um, just to give you a brief synopsis of this one, during a family holiday in Italy, you get an urgent call from your sister. There's been an accident. She's hit a man with a car and he's dead. She's overcome with terror. It's the middle of the night, uh, fearing foreign jail away from her child so she asked for your help but it wasn't her fault so she'd cover for you wouldn't she so will you do the same for her so it's about a family of uh, they're actually vets and they're all on holiday together uh, there's a, a a man and his two a brother one brother two sisters and a dead body and then they have to decide what to do with this dead body and it makes you question well it doesn't actually because i'm not sure how many people would cover an, a dead body for their sister or brother. Mm. I mean, I love, don't get me wrong, I love my family. And there's Kindle time in prison, so it's fine, but <laughs> you have to be realistic. Um, it's very clever. There's, then there's lots of then, before and after, and then there's the court cases, and then there's the, the guilt and, that eats away at the family and how their relationships erode. And so, again, once again, she's, she's written a, a thank you, Alice. Is also, she's written a, a great book, so that I would definitely recommend. Um, the next book, again, a book book I've got, I Know What I Saw by Imran Mahmood. I haven't read it yet. I'm sorry, Imran. I'm saving you for a special moment in my life because I love this man more than, more than anything. He's wonderful. Now, if you haven't read Imran's first book, then read it. It is absolutely brilliant. It's outstanding and it actually is even better on audio. Um, so I would 100% recommend you read that book first or listen to that book because this one isn't out till the 10th of June. So let's face it, you have time to read his first book. Um, so I know what I saw. Um, it is about a guy called Zander Shoot, who is who is now living on the streets, having been a wealthy banker. As he shelters for the night in an empty Mayfair flat, he hears his occupants returning home and scrambles to hide as the couple argue. Trapped in his hiding place, he soon finds himself witnessing a vicious murder. But who was the dead woman who the police later tell him couldn't have been there? And why is the man Zander saw her with evading justice? So once again, Imran is relying on his own I would say criminal background, criminal barrister background. He's not, he, I'm, I'm not insinuating that he is a criminal. He is completely on board. He is a great guy. I'm sure he has no, never done anything naughty, but obviously he's using his experience as, as a criminal barrister. Um, so I'm really, really looking forward to this one. So this is out on the 10th of June. And finally, this is actually, I know, it's, I know we're in, what, the 5th of May. This is actually my book of the year. And I, that's a really wild comment to say in the 5th of May, but I don't care. I'm going to say it. This is not for everyone. So I just have to stress that this is going to trigger so many people. So please, if you are easily offended or you get upset or this is dark beyond dark, this is something you are going to need to wear a miner's hat while you're reading because it's so dark and you're going to need to cl clean yourself in bleach and Brillo pads because it, leaves you, <laughs> it gets under your skin. This is a, um, a book by Nancy Tucker. It is out on the 24th of June, although you can get it in May um, sometime, I think next week actually, on Kindle. Um, this is about a little girl called Chrissy who has, is living in a small town with um, her mother who is struggling with her own mental health issues. She has an absent pa. She literally lives hand to mouth. She follows her friends around to get scraps of food because there's never any food at home. She is a child desperate for love, desperate for attention, and she is brushed off by everyone and ignored by everyone. And decides that the only and decides because she is being told that she's a bad seed and she's a bad child that she should perhaps behave that way because it's the only time she gets attention. So she commits the most awful crime. She murders. Uh, she's only a young girl. She's a very young girl. I think she's eight or something at the time. She murders a two-year-old boy in the town uh, and hides as and basically lives as hides as, as the killer. And the book is written from her perspective as a young child. And then we go 15 years later as, and she has reappeared 
she's ha- she's done her time and she has now changed her name and identity she's now julia and she actually has her own five-year-old daughter and all of a sudden the past is back to haunt her so it's her story then and her story now and it's so powerful and so fantastic and honestly i can't tell you how much i love this book so it's beautiful it's fantastic it's moving it's it's sad it's horrific it's just everything got under my skin and so the first day of spring by nancy tucker out on the 24th of june that's my lot for the day linda well a bit of a a a copycat situation here because um my next one is the heeding by rob callan with illustrations by nick hayes and this is one of my books of the year um already to get to be a book of the year i have a spreadsheet and i i grade a book as soon as i finished it i give a gut reaction number and you have to get 95 out of 100 or above to be a book of the year for me and this is up there and joe when i had finished this i had a conversation on twitter with rob about it because i loved it so much i did that kind of stalking thing i i love it i love it i love it um it's a collection of 35 poems and it sounds as if it ought to be dreadful because it's a collection of 35 poems on the theme of 2020 and covid and the events of 2020 but it is absolutely phenomenal it is beautifully written it's poetic um if any of you are are keen on poetry it reminded me of john dern of seamus heaney gerard manley hopkins it it has all those literary traditions underpinning it, but it is modern and fresh and really about how we connect ourselves to other people at times when physically we're unable to do that. Um, and there are poems that, that made me laugh. There's one called The Lovers, um, and it's about two 19-year-olds or thereabouts during lockdown who are out having sex in the street you know, down an alleyway kind of thing. And he he's aware of this and he wants to know what they're doing there. And he sort of says, well, you know, perhaps they're getting their, their daily exercise or, you know, people get it in different ways and that kind of thing. Um, but he he says, you know, I'd say they were getting their basic necessities, that they're out shopping or whatever. And that sounds fairly flippant, but there are really moving moments in here. There is um, an elderly man dying from COVID and he is alone until the nurse in PPE arrives. Um, There are lots of references to nature uh, and iterative images of nature right throughout. And there are some fabulous, um, really stark illustrations um, by Nick Hayes as well that, that just add that extra dimension to the quality of the writing. And it it's accessible. It's easy to read. I laughed. I cried. I was completely undone. There's a there's a poem called Pharmacy Cake, um, and it's got an entire narrative in a page and a half, a complete story and a and a complete background to an elderly woman who takes cakes into the local chemist. Um, and I won't spoil the whole thing, but you, if you're not a lover of poetry, really, I would recommend giving it a go because it is just wonderful and one of my books of the year. So a slightly different for our normal TBC type books. But I thought I'd slip it in there anyway. The next one I've chosen is Sleepless, um, Romy Hausman, partly because I still haven't read Dear Child. And so I thought I might get round to reading both of them this year. So I haven't read this, but I'll, I'll give you the blurb because it sounds quite interesting. It's been years since Nadja Kulka was convicted of a cruel crime. After being released from prison, she's wanted nothing more than to live a normal life. Nice flat, steady job, even a few friends. But when one of those friends, Laura von Hoven, free-spirited beauty and wife of Nadja's boss, kills her lover and begs Nadja for help, Nadja can't seem to be able to refuse. The two women make for a remote house in the woods, the perfect place to bury a body, but their plan quickly falls apart and Nadja finds herself outplayed, a pawn in a bizarre game in which she's both the perfect victim and the perfect murderer. And I just love the sound of that, you know, who is to blame, who's at fault. 
Um, so I think that one, for me, looks an entertaining and interesting read, and I'm looking forward to getting to that. And that one's out on the 24th of June um, from Quercus. And I forgot to say that the heeding is Elliot and Thompson out on the 17th of June. And then finally, I've chosen Sarah Winman, Still Life. And again, I haven't read this yet. Um, it's about a young British soldier and um, a woman in her 60s who's a historian and possibly a spy. And it's set in 1944 um, in Italy. And the reason I've chosen it is that I love Sarah Winman's writing. It's, it's literary, it's evocative it's moving um it's not for everybody it's you know if you if you want a fast paced psychological thriller and you want lots of blood and guts murder and and visceral crime and all the rest of it don't read sarah winman but if you want a real insight into into people into humanity into how we interact with one another um and again the end of the the blurb for this says it's a sweeping, joyful novel about beauty, love, family and fate. And she writes, well, literary fiction, but with such, such beauty. And I loved Tin Man and When God Was a Rabbit. I mean, they are just glorious books. And I cannot, cannot wait to dive into this one. But it isn't out until uh, the 10th of June. It's the HarperCollins Fourth Estate for this one. But if you haven't encountered Sarah Winman's writing yet, I really recommend it. It's beautiful. So those are my three June. Thank you. <laughs> Whenever yep. you're ready. Okay, I'm ready. Um, first one, I'm back to historical fiction again. Oh, yeah. Um, the, uh, the Forgotten Life of Arthur Pettinger by Suzanne Fortin. Um, also known as Sue Fortin, who writes, um, she writes, well, have you got one as well? Aren't they lovely? Um, I've really got into sort of World War II, well, things that are this is World War II fiction, um, but it's, yeah, there's a, there's a hint. Um, Arthur Pettinger's memory isn't what it used to be. He can't always remember the names of his grandchildren, where he lives, or which way round his slippers go. But he does remember Marius. Sometimes pronounce it, you think? Um, a woman he hasn't seen for decades, but whose face he will never forget. When the only way to move forward is to look back, will this family finally be able to? Um, so I haven't read that one yet, but I am really looking forward to that one. Um, the next one is the oh, I see it very well. The maidens. But have you read I, that one yet? Sorry? Have you read it yet? No. Not yet, no. Have you? <laughs> oh, we've, all, we've all got Linda, it. Linda, you're playing Snap. <laughs> <laughs> um, by Alex Michaelides, um, who wrote The Silent Patients, mm. which was one of my books of, it might have been 2018, not that long ago. So I have been desperately looking forward to this one. And um, I will read the blurb to you. Um, Edward Fasker is a murderer of this Mariana is certain but Fasker is untouchable a charismatic Greek tragedy professor at Cambridge University Fasker is adored by staff and students alike particularly by the members of a secret society of female students known as the Maidens so um, again that's one that's really looking forward to it's my mm. top tips for june and then the last one i have got is i've got it on my phone again sorry everybody <laughs> you probably can't see it it's confess to me by sharon doring uh, i don't have a copy of this yet i don't have a copy i don't have a book copy i don't have a kindle copy i have no copy at all i have begged <laughs> Titan books for a copy, but they have been unable to send me a copy. But Sharon Doring wrote um, She Lies Close, which was one of my books of last year. So I've had this one on pre-order ever since I finished the first book of hers. Uh, she writes wonderfully 
very dark but dry and slightly witty it's, it's a bit yeah there's humor in it but it's just very very dark um psychological thrillers set in america and her last book was absolutely amazing so that is one of the ones i'm really looking forward to in june have we done it have we done 36 books in an hour that's not <laughs> bad going not bad <laughs> that's not bad going right well then i just want to say thank you so much i don't know what's going on on facebook because i've actually <laughs> lost the will to live here i mean i don't know if we're even live still but i just want to say thank you so much ladies and we'll do the same time in three months and we'll do july august and september's to get you Ooh. there's lots already on that yeah. for me i'll <laughs> tell you july's looking like a good one mm. really okay good good well more books for me to read then so i'm gonna just love you and leave you and then let you get to have your coffee and go and watch whatever's on tv and say thank you so much for joining us again and um we shall speak again soon thank you thank Bye -bye. you Bye. Bye.